Hello and welcome to this episode of the C-Suite Lunch Series, brought to you by Corporate Traveller. I'm delighted and excited to be here today with John O'Neill, the Executive Chairman of AdTalk. John's had an extremely successful career in the automotive industry, and today he's going to be here to share some of his stories, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to glean some useful insights that you can apply in your business. John, what a pleasure to be here. Thank you. you know, pleasure. Aren't, aren't we fortunate to be sitting here in such beautiful surroundings about to share a meal together? And looking forward to the meal. Great. Bonjour, good afternoon. How are we? Very well, thank you. Today we have a crepe timba as entree, followed by an atelier burger. And as a dessert, we have lemon mochi creme brulee. Lovely. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Bon appétit. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. So, John, I said there you've had a long and successful career, but let's start with your current role, Executive Chairman of AdTalk. Tell me a little bit about AdTalk and what it does. Uh, so, AdTalk Edge is a, um, is a company that works in the automotive space. Uh, we call it automotive leisure and lifestyle, but it's all automotive, really, if it's got four wheels. We work uh, delivering solutions, marketing and technology solutions, um, really an end-to-end -end solution for car dealers, car companies. Have you got a bit of an appetite for risk? Yeah, I think I've got a huge appetite for risk. <clears throat> and, but, and I'd like to think it's become a bit more measured over time, but it's, um, but in a way my sort of, uh, you know, my appetite is, is m maybe more worldly. I mean, I think the opportunity for us as a business um, is very much a global um, opportunity. Mm. And that may sound a little bit arrogant, you know, when you're sitting down here in a category such as automotive, but really our business is, is, you know, quite unique, we think, without too many competitors. Yeah, man, just some crab with some tomatoes, mango and coriander. Looks incredible, thank and you. And the same for you, sir. Lovely. Thank Please, you enjoy. That's perfect, thank you. Thank thank you. you. Um, I'm interested, what do you think the impact of digital marketing has been on, on your business and on car dealerships? Oh, it's been extraordinary to be honest, and it changes daily. Um, extraordinary because it allows us to, to really, um, you know, get to a specific customer, mm. and um, and and even more than that, to you know to, you know to, to be able to even what we call dynamically search for customers for so matching up specific cars to specific customers. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing the change. Mm. Um, so before you got into the marketing business, bearing in mind that I, I know you're a car man, you, you actually ran some dealerships and had, had other businesses. Yep. Tell me a little bit about those. But people say to me, you know, do I miss not being in, a, in the car business? Well, I'm actually, you are a car dealer, but I'm actually probably in more dealerships mm. than I've ever been before. Mm. Um, just in a, in a different, different way, in a different role. Mm. So look, it's for, and, it, and the transition to that really came about, I, um, I'd finished a role and I got a call from a guy called John Singleton, who's pretty well-known really? advertising guy. And he wanted me to, to, uh, to see if I could pick up a, a big account, a global OEM account for his business. Mm. So I came in and we, you know, we, we did a lot of work together and um, with his, uh, his CEO, Russell Tate, and it was a lot of fun and they were good guys. And then when we sort of finished that exercise, he, I said to him one day, I said, why don't we you know, set up an automotive marketing agency for retail? Because there isn't one. And bearing in mind, he had probably 60 or 70 companies mm. in, the autom in the advertising space. And um, anyway, we did. We set up a joint venture. and So that's essentially the transition, though, that really takes you from the car dealership into marketing. Yep. So you leave, you, you buy out John Singleton, and you go off on your own. Yep. Um, and what size is the company at that point, and what are your ambitions? It's sort of four people. Mm. I don't know that we really had ambitions. I think, I think I saw the business as being able to grow, um, but bear in mind it was still very much in that you know, um, designing print ads, doing some radio, a bit of TV, mm. and not much else. Mm. And that really wasn't what I wanted to do. I mean, I, so I employed a guy um, who had worked in a web development business, and he came into the business and brought in a whole new bunch of skills in that digital space as it was evolving. And that was really the big, you know, the, 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 the big change in our business. Mm. And, and we transitioned from you know, probably what you'd call a traditional advertising agency to a bit more of a digital agency, without really knowing the impact of that on dealerships mm. um, at the time. About um, five years ago, we sat down and said, look, you know, this business is changing. There's an opportunity to, to, to do much more than this um, with this business, not only here, but elsewhere. Mm. Um, what could you see at that point? I mean, 
from the sounds of it, the business is, is moving, but there's something you obviously see at that point that makes you think. I'm a bit of a student, I think, of um, what's happening around the world in, in the automotive space. And I, particularly in the US, noticed um, the growth of a couple of companies that were building, you know, building themselves into being um, uh, marketing agencies for hundreds, if not thousands, of dealerships. Um, and one of them, I um, was attached to a company that Warren Buffett had bought, and I thought, this is pretty interesting. Why does Warren Buffett want to be in the car business? And uh, when I looked beyond the car, you know, the car dealerships that he bought, he he also owned this sort of marketing agency that had hundreds, uh, thousands of dealers that they also provided services to. And I thought, you know, that's where this, you know, that's where the opportunity is. And if I don't do something about this business here, then I'm going to miss the opportunity to build one of those mm. in, you know, in Australia or New Zealand and the difference. Mm. And what's the addressable market in Australia? Um, in the sort of new car franchise area, there's about 3,000 dealers. Right. Um, there's, you know, and that's sort of, there's some consolidation. Um, so there's a couple of groups that have got hundreds, a couple of public companies. So, um, yeah, but for us now, we think way beyond Australia. You know, we've, we've We've really, the last sort of four years, been looking at Asia as a um, as a place to that, you know that we want to go. And mm. um, we moved into New Zealand two years ago, mm. and that's been a fantastic um, you know move for us. So let's go back to that first strategic meeting you had when you brought in the consultant. Yep. Well, our food's just about to arrive. There Thank you, you very much. That's nice delicious. You, wow, look at that. Uh, mm. And that's for you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yes, that first strategic meeting when you brought the consultant in, because that to me sounds very key, it sounds like that really changed things. Did it really change things? And how do you keep that strategic focus, you know, after that first initial meeting? I mean, we didn't know what to expect. We actually had no idea what, what it was going to be about. It, it was quite an amazing experience because it was quite con confrontational because some of the things we talk about are not only the challenges that the business might have or the opportunities or the threats, but also how the executive team, the leadership team, would work together. So it wasn't so much the first one, but the second one, I think, where we had to revisit what we'd done, and we hadn't really done that much. So, you know, we weren't disciplined. The, you know, the leadership team was sort of struggling to come to grips with, you know, this whole new process. Going back and then say, well, why didn't it work? And, you know, typically it's about communication. Mm. Typically it's about well, you know, we really didn't know, sitting over here, what these guys over here were doing. Mm. And so it, it was a real, and it took a while, it took a year of a number of those. So four of those quarterly sessions and all of the other ones in between. And we, you know, we, to, to really get it right. And then when we saw the, the benefit of it, and the benefit, I think, the, you know, came through a really interesting outcome. And that outcome was identifying the Edge online consulting business as a business that we should at the very least, strategically um, involve ourselves with. And as it happened, we, we ended up, you know, um, through an acquisition merger of that business. So a year later, looking at that and going, wow, you know, we went through this this process. We identified a business. We, uh, you know, we, we identify what we think we want to do, how big we want to grow. We've got some goals. They're out for a number of years, but and we've done something about it was really the coming together moment. What have the challenges been when it comes to overseas growth? Um, Recognising that they're all different, <clears throat> that they need local content, they need local people. Mm. Um, not being sort of arrogant enough to think that we can just go in there and do it ourselves because we've done it here. Mm. Um, more so in Asia, every market is completely different. Because we're constantly reviewing our business, we constantly change you know, the, the slight direction. Mm. So we thought that you know, for us to go into Malaysia or Thailand or Indonesia, would require us to go in there, find a local partner, find a local manager. Interestingly, it's, it isn't the case. Mm. What we've done is, you know, our partnerships with Google and Facebook have uh, meant that they've taken us into those markets mm. because what they don't have is they don't have within those markets somebody who looks like us mm. to help activate their campaigns. Mm. So, John, one of the things that you've mentioned quite a bit in this conversation is relationships. You know, we started off talking about relationships with your family and then we talked about relationships with all of those dealers. How important are relationships to business? Uh, really important. I mean, they can make your life really easy and um, or without them, very difficult. So, you know, the relationships with, you know, your accountants or your lawyers, if that's what you, you know, if that's what you need. Um, you know, I find um, because I travel a lot, and um, uh, for me, one of the good relationships, one of the, you know, in recent years, has been with Corporate Traveller, our, our travel provider, because it's 
you know, I used to do all of that myself. I used to, and I used to love doing it. I'd go online and I'd book the flights. And it wasn't about booking the cheapest. It was just I really enjoyed doing that. And then it got uh, to the stage where it got bigger and there were too many people. And, and so, you know, we thought, now's the time. We talked to them a couple of years ago. Now's the time to get them involved. They came in. And it's just, it's seamless. Send them an email, everything's done. Mm. I don't have to worry about it. So, mm. you know, for me, who tra and I travel a lot, um, mm. you know, it's just a seamless um, part of our business. So they are, you know, they're really important as, you know, um, as are, all, you know, all of those other providers. So, I mean, it's just about, I think, trying to make life easy mm. um, and being able to pick up the phone and get something done quite quickly mm. um, with people you know, people you trust. And, mm. Um, listening to your career, it sounds like a really great and really varied career. It sounds like it's been there's been lots of successes. Have there been some other darker moments, if you like, where things yeah. haven't worked out? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that's you know, I mean, you probably hear that most entrepreneurs, if they own up, you know, would tell you that. I certainly have. We had in the early days of the agency, the advertising agency, you know, we got caught with a you know with a with a bill that we couldn't meet. We ended up folding the company. Mm. Well, we we ended up doing a deal with a you know with a um, with a receiver and buying it back, but it was the same sort of thing. It was a business failure. Um, it was tough. I mean, it was a you know it was a hard time, but uh, you know, I mean, I I wanted to get through it. I wanted to get you know out the other side as quickly as I possibly could. Mm. So um, you talked there also about support. So have you got mentors? Do you work with mentors? Have you worked with mentors in the past? Oh, here comes our dessert. Hey, oh. That's the lemon myrtle creme brulee with the lemon myrtle and mascarpone gelato. Thank you very much. This is your favourite, isn't yeah, it, John? <laughs> and for you, sir. Thank you. Please, enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. So, John, again, you've talked a lot about relationships. Yeah. Have you had particular mentors over your career, particular people that you've worked with? I have. Um, yep. I um, through, the, through the 80s, I worked for um, a guy in, in New Zealand who, you know, really was a, a mentor of mine. And I think what I think about now um, was the most important part of that was that it was I mean we were in the automotive business but you know he introduced me to his circle who were bankers and you know investment bankers and lawyers and you know so it was completely different I mean I was yeah and I think that stayed with me it may seem a bit strange but it was it was just not I just you know I just wasn't talking to car guys and you know so I was opening up sort of my you know sphere of influence and that stayed with me and it's something I I do you know all the time and then in recent years in the business, I bought in, you know, um, uh, some advisors. You know, I call them advisory board. A couple of them are mates. One of them's a mentor. You know, it's just uh, guys who have done, you know, have done really good things in business. Mm. And uh, so, not only in terms of the success of the business, but more importantly about what the business looks like and how mm. they, how they, you know, work with people and how they grow leadership you know, within their business. And that's, they're the things that are important to me. Mm. So John, you've had a really interesting career, I think, because in the end, you started as a car dealer and now you're running a technology company. Did you foresee that? Is that what you expected? No, absolutely not. Even a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have, um, have said that that's where we would end up. And I think in 12 months time, we'll be, you know, we'll be uh, you know, immersed as a, as a technology business because that's, you know, that's where the future is for us, is, is developing technology that helps, you know, deliver marketing solutions. John, I can see by your face you're very lit up. It's been an absolute ride, obviously, your, your career. What would your advice be to aspiring business builders and other sort of uh, leaders? Well, I think, um, you know, certainly back yourself, but, but in doing so, surround yourself with, um, you know, with some good process, which involves advice from people who you can, you know, you can trust in or outside the business and you know and and that's not you know that's not out of a textbook that's just saying you know get people along that can help you on the journey but um but you know but back yourself if you've got a you know if you've got a an, an idea or a plan or you know go for it and um you know today you can do anything and and the you know the the world is is you know at our doorstep really is that's exciting. Thank mm. you very much, John. A pleasure. Thank um, you. I feel like I've had a really exciting hour with you. We've had a delicious meal at the Sofitel, so we thank have. you very much thank for you. your time. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the C-Suite Lunch Series brought to us by Corporate Traveller. I'm Kate Mills, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.